It is no secret that when it comes to difficult IV access, nobody's better than anesthesia. We get called all the time for impossible IV access, like it is in this patient that we're going to describe in this video. This patient is an elderly woman who had chemotherapy and has very abused or overused IV access, peripheral veins are impossible to find. Moreover, due to the steroid therapy for her bad arthritis, she also has very brittle, frail veins that basically bleed or form hematomas whenever you touch them, even with a tiny needle. For this reason, we decided to access the cephalic vein as the last resource before reaching out for a central venous access. And let's see how that goes. And in particular, we're going to share one trick, which I call the bent IV catheter, which is a technique that allows you to access very peripheral veins when you don't have enough space to keep the needle horizontal or at a very low angle to be able to slide the needle into the vein in order to accomplish successful intravenous cannulation. So let's see this. We're going to start with preparation. As you could see, we always apply sterile drape, particularly when you're dealing with a difficult IV access, because you don't know whether you're going to be needing to switch to another vein or perhaps use ultrasound to access a difficult vein. So always apply sterile dressing, sterile field, and apply a lot of skin preparation. You simply do not know where you end up insert it in the IV catheter. So don't interrupt the procedure, de-sterilize your hands if you're using sterile technique. Simply prep everything, a lot more than you think you will need. Here we can see also the application of the tourniquet or S-mark if you will. And for that reason, we're gonna let it sit a little bit until the veins pop up and the blood accumulates sufficiently. I typically use lidocaine injection for subcutaneous and skin anesthesia just because it makes it just so much more pleasant for the patient. And here's that technique where we take an intravenous catheter and we want to bend that catheter slightly so that you have a leverage point if you go too deep and you can't lift it up, a bent catheter allows you to lift it up and insert it into the vein and you simply slide the catheter over the needle once you accomplish that. Now pay attention to how we tense in the skin to fix the cephalic vein so it doesn't move and as soon as you get a flashback and this is a long arterial line catheter because you would like to leave that catheter longer inside the vein you can see these veins immediately bleed even with the proper IV insertion, you often may get a slight hematoma. But the test to the fact that this IV line is fully functional is once you're connected to the IV bag and the IV line and you start running, you can see how fast this IV line runs. And there's no formation of the bump locally that is cold to touch and indicative of extravasation around the vein. So at this point in time, we know we have a functioning IV line. All we need to do is basically apply a sterile occlusive wound dressing that is transparent. Transparency of this wound dressing that we're going to apply will allow us to actually monitor the IV line as we continue infusing. As any appearance of a bump or tumescence around the site of the needle insertion would be indicative of an extravasation around the vein. Okay, that was it. And that was it. Cephalic vein cannulation using the bent needle or bent catheter technique, which I often use for superficial veins where I need to keep that angle very, very low. And if you like our videos, make sure to subscribe to Nesora YouTube channel. Until next time.